Good morning everyone. Today we're going to talk about changes on EDSA. Now of course the first thing you're going to notice is the bicycle lane painted green with green lights. But what you'll also notice is these new white lights that have been installed in the road. This is something that's common in many countries but here in the Philippines, especially on EDSA, this is actually relatively new. This is how it looks like when you're driving along. So even if you can't see the painted lines, even if you don't have good visibility, you can easily see the different lane markings. So when you look at them here in the road, let's get a closer look. This is how they look. Kind of small, right? Solar panel in the middle. And this is how they look if you take them out of the ground. You can get them in different colors. You can get them flashing. You can get them solid. Let's change our background. Okay, there we go. So in the road, they look like these tiny little lights, but this is actually what they look like. You sink them in the road. There's no power lines, no power cables. It's all charged by this little solar panel inside. And these are actually pretty tough. You can run over these and you'll barely even feel it on your motorcycle, in your car. There are other types like this, which are meant to be mounted on top of the road. So once you go over it, you're gonna feel it like a do 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 You know, if you get too close to the, uh, too close to the gutter, it will give you a warning because you're going to feel it. So there's different types. This one is actually nice because it has a reflector and it has LEDs. So even if it doesn't get charged enough during the day, as long as your headlights hit this, it's going to reflect back light. Now, these are tough, but they can get broken. You'll see some of these on EDSA are already damaged. Primarily, I think it's because of contractors using heavy equipment, especially those that have tracks. They run over these and they destroy them. You might say, well, it's no big deal. You just pull it out of the ground, put a new one. The problem is the cost. I looked at various projects around the Philippines using these. The average price is nine to 12,000 pesos per unit. Then once you add labor and equipment, you're looking at, you know, another three, four, five thousand on top of that. So they are very effective. They are very nice to drive along on the road. Very useful, for example, if you're coming to a split. For example, here, this is one of the things that a lot of people have been saying. When there's a split in the road, for example, you have a flyover or you have a tunnel, then you can do this with the lights. So people have an early warning. Aside from that, there's another complaint that people have been mentioning, put plastic barriers before the concrete barriers. And that's what the MMDA are doing. Here we have a closer look. You see, first of all, we have a plastic barrier. Then you have this reflective post. Then you have the concrete barriers, but you also have this warning light up here. Here, here's the warning light. This is also solar powered, by the way. You have the panel on top and then the battery on the inside. Most of the accidents you actually see involving barriers are with drunk drivers or drivers that fell asleep. But at the same time, we should improve road safety. So let me show you another change. You see these barriers here, how they have these flashing lights. This is a new type of barrier that's being tested. So again, this has a small solar panel on top. It has a battery inside, no power cables, completely independent and collects power during the day and in the early morning, late at night, it flashes these lights. So really it is impossible not to see these uh, new barriers that are being tested. Now, although these new barriers are a huge improvement, they're only under testing at the moment and they are not perfect. For example, if you look at this barrier on the end, which is arguably the most important barrier because when you're driving forwards, that's the first one you're going to see because it's the start of the barriers. Well, you will notice this one is not turned on. For some reason it has a fault and this isn't the first time that it's happened. I've seen this a few times. Now, the idea is that there's three lights here and they would be flashing to warn drivers. You can see they're not turned on. So, if ever they decide to proceed with this type of barrier, first of all, they need to make sure the manufacturer improves their design. Secondly, there should be a backup, a passive reflector, so that even if the lights fail, when the headlights of the car or the motorcycle hit it, it will reflect back. Just like this one, if the LEDs aren't flashing, at least it has a built-in reflector that will capture the headlights and then reflect it back to the driver. So these are pretty cool, also kind of expensive, but uh, yeah, they're not yet perfect. So this is an upgrade that they're considering and they are testing on EDSA right now. Another change you're going to see on EDSA are all of these new street lights. Adding the MMDA logo to all of the street lights, kind of overkill, but the idea of installing more street lights is very good. 
A lot of people have noticed these and they've been asking, how did MMDH install these so fast? Well, there's no power cables. These are all self-contained units. So you have the solar panel on top, you have the batteries on the inside, and then you have the light that shines down on the road. So again, they've been able to roll this out very, very quickly. In fact, just near Main Avenue, you can see the tunnel here. You've got all of these lights. See this one, this one, this one, this one. These are all new. These are all newly installed by MMDA. These are all solar powered. So as long as there's sunlight, they will work. I know what you're thinking. What if it's a gloomy day? Well, we've had rain the last few days, right? But you can see my solar studs are still lighting up. I left these outside. As long as they're really left under the sun all day, every day, which obviously these are because you cannot move them, they will generally collect enough light. Although you may find that they start brighter, for example, let's say they come on at 8 p.m. By the time it gets to 3, 4, 5 a.m., they might not be quite as bright, at least on those rainy and dull days. And it's not just on the sidewalk or on the center island, they've also been installing them for the bus lane. That's also very useful because sometimes the buses do crash, Honestly, again, a lot of the time it's because they're speeding. They're not obeying the 50 kilometer per hour limit, but adding these lights, making the whole bus lane more visible, of course it will help. Now I mentioned earlier about what if there's not enough sunlight? Well, here's one of the lights that should have been turned on, but you can see it's not. Why? Because it's covered by trees. So this is something that the agency has to keep on top of. They have to make sure there's no obstructions for the solar panel. Actually, a little bit of tree coverage is okay. If you look at this one, you can see the sun can still shine through to the solar panel on top, the light came on. But the previous one, it has too much coverage from the trees, not able to get enough sunlight to the solar panel. So these are all new technologies being rolled out to EDSA. I know you might say in other parts of the world, this is common, this is normal. Here, these are new technologies being put onto the road, at least for EDSA. So they're going to learn as they go along, they're going to make improvements, they're going to realize, okay, wherever we install this, we have to make sure there's no coverage, we have to make sure the teams that go around cutting back trees are very active. So they can easily resolve this, it's not a big problem. Now another change we've seen on EDSA are these motorcycle emergency laybys for when it's raining. These were created under the previous chairman, Chairman Abelos. He created these based on feedback from motorcycle riders. The idea is that when it's heavy rain, they can go here, park their motorcycles. There are some rules posted about how long you can stay here, under what conditions and things like that. Social distancing reminder. The only problem is these are not really being utilized that well. They've been installed on various parts of EDSA, but a lot of the time the motorcycle riders are still under the footbridges. They're still under the MRT. So although these have been created for riders, a lot of the time they're not being used. Now, another improvement you may have noticed, especially if you're a commuter, is those footbridges that didn't have roofs before, they're now adding them. And those footbridges that did have roofs, they're refurbishing them with higher roofs, with better roofs, with better lighting, with CCTV. So this one here, I believe, is also near Main Avenue. Let's go ahead to the next one. This is in front of Q Mart. And what you'll see here actually is something that a lot of cyclists have been asking for. You see this here? This is so that you can push your bicycle instead of having to carry it. This also keeps cyclists from doing U-turns, for example, North Ed. So they love to do that crazy U-turn. Very dangerous for cyclists. They're coming from the outside, cutting across multiple lanes to do a U-turn. So they installed this here and they're going to install it, as far as I know, on most footbridges. Uh, let's have a look at an example. Here you can see a demonstration. He has his bicycle on here and he's just pushing it up. It's a little bit steep in some areas, but it is possible. And I think for a lot of people, this will be easier than carrying it on their back. Now this cyclist, I actually flagged him down and I asked him, can you please do a demonstration? This was very early in the morning around somewhere 4 to 4.30 a.m. And he was kind enough to do the demonstration. So if you're watching this, thank you very much. Uh, what else do we have? This one, so new lighting. Because a lot of people complain, they say they don't want to take the footbridge because it's scary. They say there's people hanging around up there, it's dark, maybe someone's gonna steal from them. So you've got all of this new lighting that's being installed. Now, let me warn you, these are still under construction. They're not finished yet. So if you go there and you see some tarpaulings and things like that, please don't complain because they're not finished yet. They're still under construction. So another thing you noticed there before the camera moved away, CCTV up here, CCTV here. 
and there's some more CCTV. Where is it? There's another one. So this is part of the upgraded CCTV project to get a better coverage, to give better protection, to give better identification of hold up as snatchers and things like that. So this is all moves forward to really make it a safer place and a place that people want to use so that people don't jaywalk. They don't avoid these infrastructures that are put there to help them because it's well lit it's secured by cctv they have members of the sidewalk clearing group you've probably seen them wearing blue t-shirts and making sure people don't sleep in these places actually overnight they might turn a blind eye to it when there's no one there but by the time the morning comes and commuters start going to work that's the time they're going to move those people away and I know you might say, well, that's wrong. But at the end of the day, these people are homeless. They still need somewhere to sleep. They still need a roof over their head. Yes, DSWD should come in. Yes, the city should come in. At the end of the day, there are some people that just fall outside of those categories. They haven't been helped yet. They need a place to sleep. So yes, maybe you know, between, let's say, midnight, 4 a.m., you might see them there. But by the time people start going to work, they will be moved away. So it's just a quick video, but I wanted to show you some of the changes that are happening on EDSA because sometimes people don't see these things. They don't really recognize it. They say nothing's changing, nothing's improving. We should look around and see what is changing, what is improving. Now, like I said, this is not all finished yet. There's still need for improvements, but it's being done. It's happening. So I just wanted to share it and, you know, get any feedback about what you think still needs to be done, what should be done differently. These new roofs are going to make a huge difference for commuters, especially those who use the EDSA busway, because when it's raining or it's too sunny, it is a nightmare to stand on those footbridges. But at least now they'll have proper roofs, they'll have protection by CCTV, they'll have enough lighting, especially important in the morning. Unfortunately, snatchers on the EDSA busway is still a problem. They're being apprehended by IACT, they're being apprehended by MMDA. And then obviously the PMP will come in and take those snatchers away. What happens to those snatchers later obviously depends on the person, whether they actually go ahead and make a formal complaint. That's a whole different topic anyway. So that's pretty much it really. I just wanted to go through, show you an idea of what's happening on EDSA, what's changing, what kind of improvements we're seeing. And yeah, just try and get some feedback. So thank you for watching.